today I'm going to talk more about the role of the artist in society than my work. Uh, I like to think that the work that I do kind of bridges sculpture and functional pottery. We, the three of us, all had different ideas or titles for the show, so rather than try to come up with one, we just put all three together. So my title was The Outcast, and uh, that's not a reflection on me personally. It's more of a statement about, uh, about art in the educational curriculum and about artists and their role in society. Uh, Wanda in, in Hangul means outcast, so my students tell me. Uh, so the title is a commentary on the place of the artist in society and also, like I said before, about the place in arts in the art curriculum. Uh, I also want to talk a little about the ongoing debate over whether pottery is an art form or is merely just craft. I find it kind of odd that art is everywhere in all cultures. It permeates our society. Uh, but most people don't see it as a viable source of income. And uh, unfortunately, my arts education had a large part to play in my inability to become a working artist. Um, I know that in Korea and Asia, uh, pottery has been elevated to the realm of art many great potters are considered great artists. But in Western society, there is a debate that revolves around the notion of pottery as craft, as opposed to being fine art. Even in the school that I attended, the pottery department was viewed as a place where less serious artists ended up. And uh, very few students spent much time there. And a lot of jokes were made about uh, that department by the sculpture, painting, and drawing departments. Um, some of my teachers actually took me aside and uh, asked me to focus more on my serious sculptural studies. Um, because by the end of it, I was taking a triple major in sculpture and pottery, and they thought I was wasting my time. Uh, it wasn't really until my work began to evolve into what you may see here, here today as one of a kind hand built pieces uh, that they began to take me seriously and they would label it sculpture, and I still label it functional pottery. I like a bowl to hold something, I like a teapot to pour tea. So uh, even my chosen medium of expression was, was outcast in the artistic community. And the last point I'd like to make, and I'll try to keep this clear, uh, is about the place of arts uh, in the educational curriculum. To think for themselves. I mean, some of our greatest thinkers in the world made mistake after mistake after mistake, and that's how they learned and grew and came up with their great discoveries. My name is L.A. White, and I'd like to talk today about my paintings. Um, I'd also like to, to say thank you very much to everyone for coming and all of the support that I've received. Um, it really made life easier in working away on my work, because um, it can be a lonely process, so, um, Really, thank you for all the support you told me. You have to communicate in your art, in your work. Um, you have to communicate a strong message. And I, I was always concerned about making a living and not being a poor artist, perhaps. So I did illustration, visual communication design. So after I graduated, I decided I'm going to concentrate on my painting. And I'm going to give you a little, so what a juma. So a juma is, um, as you probably know, it's the term for a married woman in Korea. And uh, I, my family name is White as well. And I am White. And um, I'm engaged to a Korean man. So it got me thinking, I'll be a White Ajuma in Korea. So it got me questioning, questioning my place in society. So this is another image, just a little oh, sketch oh. that got going. So it, it yeah. So people don't know about Korea so much in New Zealand, so they just assumed he was Japanese. <clears throat> um, so I started creating these two characters, um, Butter Girl to the left and Rice Boy to the right. And I like to think they embody some characteristics that embody certain stereotypes, um, perhaps. I've taken these stereotypes and tried to make these 
little strange characters from them. Um, so perhaps people might think of a Western girl as a big, curvaceous, slightly sexually forward perhaps, and an Asian guy is perhaps a little smaller. Um, people in the West might have a slightly negative view of Japan, and because people thought he was Japanese, they thought uh, certain negative ways towards Japan. Um, I was also inspired by Japanese depictions of Western women. So this is from the Japanese side looking at Western women. So this is from the Japanese avant-garde movement. And um, you can see how these Western women are quite curvaceous. And, and so this is the original yellow peril in New Zealand. I remember being told by my grandparents about the evil Japanese, how they were coming to take over New Zealand. And I heard certain ideas, anti-Asian ideas perhaps, in uh, New Zealand. So that his Buddha in the corner and they're kind of pointing towards this yellow peril that's going to come to the west and perhaps take over. Very negative way of thinking, old fashioned. I guess I'd like to say um, I'm facing some difficult feelings and I just use my painting to explore um, these issues, try and deal with it in a positive way. So thank you very much for listening. And uh, thank you so much for coming. My name is Sarah F. I am um, I'm from Toronto, Canada, and I studied uh, visual art at York University. Um, after graduating, I came to Korea, and I've been living here for almost three full years, and I'm on my way back in the next little while. Um, the work that I'd like to talk to you about today is based, um, a lot of it I've been influenced since living here, uh, the Restaurant Logo series and manufactured solutions for a dying planet. Um, to begin with the restaurant logo series, I'll start actually with showing you some of the images. What I do is I've taken photographs of the different restaurants and then manipulated them in Photoshop. Um, I'm really, I was really interested and really shocked in, in walking around and seeing these images of food for restaurants and it's these very um, silly cartoon characters that are encouraging you to eat meat. And um, if I hadn't studied visual art, I probably would have studied nutrition because I think it's really fascinating. And I just find that there's this massive discrepancy between the way that um, food is actually made and the way that it's presented. And that's something that I find really challenging because I think as a society, uh, we take it for granted what we're being fed. And I think people aren't really aware of what is in the food that we're eating. Um, genetically modified food, uh, pesticides in food, also, what else is there? Um, just processed food. It's a lot of garbage in stuff that's packaged and sold in grocery stores. And I don't think people are aware of that. I think we've lost this connection to our earth and to the food we're putting in our bodies. And then we see these images and they make us laugh and we think it's funny, but we're not actually thinking about um, what the reality is. I think if people can look at something and laugh, then they're open to it, and then hopefully they'll think about it. Um, anyways, I'll stop my little rant on the food thing, <laughs> um, but I want to encourage people to do that research and know what's in your food because it's incredibly political, and it, um, it's your body. And I think the way that we eat can really determine how we feel and how we live and um, just influence the rest of um, what goes on in the world, it's, uh, yeah, so living here I've really enjoyed having the time to read about the environment and read about nutrition and seeing how, um, just learning, just learning more about that, so that's kind of, yeah. It was, it's, it, um, this was really an exciting project for me because it's the first real series I feel like I've made outside of university that I've done on my own with my own influences and my own interests and um, that's been really exciting to be here in Gwangju and to be working with the Artist Collective and to have the support of uh, so many people and the GIC facility um, to just encourage me to be making this art and taking myself seriously. You can hear that theme kind of coming up that artists aren't valued as questioners, artists aren't valued in society necessarily and said um, and maybe that's why sometimes artists aren't necessarily overly appreciated or paid for their opinions. And 